Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. And welcome back. Welcome back to Espresso and Kabbalah. So happy that you're all with us this morning. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> We're here with our coffee. Mm. Nothing like espresso and Kabbalah. So, welcome back everybody. Hope you all had a wonderful week. Um, and I'm so glad that you're here. Um, today's chapter is 16. We have the practical Tanya. Wait, where's my other copy? No, I have this one. We have the practical Tanya by the Alter Rebbe, and it was adapted beautifully by Rabbi Chaim Miller, um, a famed author of Jewish mysticism, Kabbalah, and Chabad philosophy. So. As soon as you all have a book or a Tanya, any form of Tanya works, um, we are ready to roll right into the text. I hope you're all having a fantastic week and that life is being good to you. So here we are. Um, happy summer. Hope you're all having a safe and fun time on your travels and vacations and regular life in a summer mode if that's what you're doing. So chapter 16, um, we're discussing the Benoni. We're discussing our in-betweener friend um, who is here to serve Hashem. He's here to serve God. That's what we're all here to do, to make this world a vibrant and beautiful place um, that Hashem is comfortable in. So sometimes, um, you know, we try to create a vibe, we try to create our home, maybe we go and buy some new pillows, we try to make it like home decor, <laughs> but according to Yiddishkeit, we're supposed to do home decor for God. And that means to make our home a place where Hashem is comfortable. So. Maybe that means setting up a little prayer corner where you can pull out your siddur or chitas in the morning and daven a few words of thanks and praise to Hashem. Maybe that means um, setting a special groceries aside, something yummy that you like for Shabbat and pulling that out at your Friday night dinner. Maybe inviting some friends over for some hummus and challah and Israeli salad and fish and whatever you like to eat for Shabbat. Home decor for Hashem means making our home a place where God is comfortable, where he can walk in and say, this is a home for me. This is a Jewish, beautiful, vibrant um, area that life is welcome in and let, like Hashem is welcome in. And that's just our job here, to make our homes and our hearts a place where Hashem is welcome. So that's what it means to serve God, according to the Tanya. And the Benoni is the character who does it all the way. So <laughs> this, is, this guy is perfect, like in behavior, right? Because we're all struggling inside, right? No one's perfect in their heart. Like we're not perfect 24 seven, perfect thoughts and feelings, but we can display behavior that reflects on our true essence. So the Benoni is someone who has completely mastered his self-control. His experience of life is 100% godly. That means every single action he does is according to Torah, mitzvot, being kind, being loving and respectful. Um, every word he says is boosting another person, is kind and wholesome and every thought is leading him to a good place. He doesn't get tri tripped up and trapped by negative thoughts. He has full control over his 
what am I what do I want to think about and he can take himself wherever he wants to be so we can all do that at any moment of the day if I don't like a thought that pops into my head I can say you know what I don't want to think a negative thought right now so I'm gonna focus on five things that I'm grateful for and immediately that can like spin around our whole entire day and say I'm grateful for A B C D E and that's how I want to live my life today so we're always capable of reaching out and taking control over how we feel and how we think and we can't control how we feel but we can take control of the situation of what we think about and what we say and of course we can control what we do if we apply ourselves so <laughs> good morning happy thursday and welcome back to espresso and kabbalah cheers Um, let's tune in after that little intro. Chapter 16, um, meditation, when meditation fails. So what does that mean? The Alter Rebbe spends a lot of time in the Tanya discussing meditation and how that gives us the tools of agency and it gives us a power of putting ourselves on track. Sometimes it doesn't work, right? We can think ourselves to perfection and to success, but we're back at square one. What happens? So the conflict begins. Page 188, section one of chapter 16, our life's mission. So in chapters 12 through 14, and we're discussing Tanya, which is all about the soul, right? The anatomy of the soul. The Tanya has offered us a very, right, I always have my candle here. I try to remember to bring the soul analogy because our soul is like a flame that rises upwards. Um, we're, given a, we're given a detailed insight into the Benoni, which is presented as the realistic ideal for, I mean, religious ideal for every person, right? So someone who's striving to add observance of God into their life, they say, you know, I really would find a lot of meaning and joy by bringing some Torah observance into my life. You know, how can I do that today? That's the Benoni. He's always striving to grow and connect to his soul and his heritage. When it comes to practical observance, right, the Benoni is a great success. He looks great on paper, right? Check, 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 it's all done. But he struggles to maintain a steady emotional attachment to God. So we, un we know that emotions propel everything, right? Ask anyone in marketing, how do you get someone to commit to something? Ask anyone who's um, ever made a decision that they stuck to, it was fueled emotionally, because that's how we roll. Emotions fuel us and our mind fuels our emotions. The Benoni's feelings sometimes fluctuate. He sometimes has utter rapture for God, like complete awe, um, and that's when his prayers and meditations are going well. And then sometimes they go to thoughts of selfish, animalistic behavior, right? We're all, we're all innocent until we're not, um, and that can bother him much of the time. The Tanya reassures us that this is all quite normal. When it comes to practical observance, both between man and God and between man and his fellow, we should expect nothing less than total self-control. But the emotional ride is going to be a roller coaster for the Benoni. Most of us will spend our lives with conflicting urges, a longing to worship God alongside a desire to be selfish, perhaps. When this range of feelings sur surfaces, it should not be cause for alarm. So. One of the incredible things about the Tanya is, and it kind of relates to everything in life, um, let's say like motherhood, because that's something that I'm very involved in in my life right now. Um, the first time around, right, like the first pregnancy, the first birth, the first baby, um, thank God we're blessed with four children, sweet, beautiful children, thank God. Um, but the first time around, it's always like, is this normal? Is that normal? Like, is this okay? And that can cause a lot of panic for new parents or a new mom. And the Alter Rebbe keeps telling us in the Tanya, guys, 
all of your concerns about is this normal even in psychology like people going to therapists are kind of like is this normal is that normal like am i normal um we all just want to know like are we okay right that the therapist will tell you and the people who are experienced parents will tell you and the alter Rebbe tells you and the tanya the same thing you're normal you're fine you're just like all the other people going through their human experience and it should not be cause for alarm. Like, don't panic. <laughs> However you feel is normal. And that's how Hashem created you. That's how Hashem created us. He wants us to overcome our struggles. And that's the beauty of being alive. So what's the solution for these feelings? Okay, great. So they're normal, right? Like, now where does that leave me? Like, I'm struggling. I don't, I don't want to feel these negative feelings. The solution proposed by the Tanya is to focus on the positive, right? And stir up as much reverence and love for God as possible. To make as many deposits in our emotional bank account as we can. So we all know about the love tank, right? We can keep putting deposits of love into our children's love tank, into our own, into our relationship, into our jobs. Just keep on like putting um, change in the bank. It, it works the same way emotionally. Since the animal soul, which can never really be changed, will always, unfortunately, however we look at it, um, will always pull us towards selfishness. We need to ensure that there is a strong pull in the other direction towards God, towards Hashem. And the way to do that, in the Tanya's view, is through prolonged and regular mindful meditation. So we're always going to have pull to this way, a pull to that way, we're always going to have some sort of struggle. That's just how Hashem made us. That's how we're created. That's how it is. And because it's always going to be a selfish pull coming from the animal soul, the Tanya, the Altar Rebbe recommends to constantly meditate and put our minds to godliness. And it'll give us a, a little... Um, a little help in the other direction. So, l'chaim. <laughs> Cheers. To good health and happiness for everybody. V'zeh paraktes Zion, chapter 16. V'zeh klal gadol b'avaydas Hashem l'bainanim, page 189. For bainanim, and those who seek to become bainanim, that's us, <laughs> the worship of God has this one all encompassing principle. Ha'ikar hu limshal vilishlait al hatava shabachal hasmali. The main thing is to dominate and control the natural tendencies of the animal soul in the heart's left chamber. The all encompassing principle is you must wrestle with your nature and seek to control it. Um, it's pretty self explanatory, right? We want to be masters of ourselves, of our animals. Um, as we saw in chapter 15, it's possible to have perfect religious behavior and not be at war with the animal soul, either due to decreased passions or persistent discipline, but that's not enough to worship God properly. Even if our animal soul has been tamed and trained to behave impeccably in a certain area, we need to break our nature and do more. Um, we're not expected to transform our animal soul to be our friend in worshiping God. We just need to dominate and control its nature so that we can worship Hashem. How is this achieved? Al yidei ar Hashem hamer lanafash ha'alekes shaba mayach Through the divine light which shines upon your divine soul that rests in the brain. So we have a divine light in us that is coming to help us and get us, um, help us be successful in our mission. Sorry about the live on the Instagram. You can tune in Facebook or Instagram or in person or YouTube or Spotify. Espresso and Kabbalah is worldwide um, to get your weekly fix of Tanya with a sip of espresso. Um, so what do we do here? We have an evil impulse. We have an animal soul. And it, it, it gives us an impulse to evil. It gives us an impulse to misbehave or lash out or say something that we don't mean or do something that we don't mean to do and it might trouble the banani right it's this pull it's this like childish immature part of us that just isn't ready to be an adult 
or in self-control. Um, so how does it do this? A. If the Benoni has complete mental focus to follow God's will, when the urges arise from the Yitzhahara, it's relatively easy to diffuse them since the brain rules over the heart. Um, right? That's the first principle. Mind rules over the heart. And B, sometimes, especially when the Benoni is uninspired, the Yitzhahara will send him into a state of mental confusion, and he's unsure what he wants. He says, maybe I don't actually want to follow um, my Jewish heritage. Maybe I don't want to follow God's will right now. And it's at this point when the Benoni's inner flame is at its weakest and that his struggle is the greatest because the mind is the key. And if we get mentally confused, it's kind of game over for the godly soul because the mind is so powerful. But God offers him assistance in the form of, hi, good morning, in the form of light which shines upon the divine soul which rests in the brain. We're on page 189 in the Practical Tanya, chapter Text Zion 16. Um, and that is why the Benoni is always able to be in control of his behavior even in his darkest moments. So the first way is brain rules over the heart, and the second way is light shines upon the divine soul, and Hashem helps him overcome um, with a little bit of light. The Lishlight al Halev, and to use the mind to rule over the heart. Page 190. So while the Benoni can expect God's assistance in times of confusion, it is preferable for him not to rely on that. What's the preference? What should he do if he's stuck? If he's able to retain sufficient mental focus and the awareness that he wishes to follow God's will, he can rely on the mind's natural tendency to rule over the heart. So sometimes we like pray for God to step in and give us that boost and give us that helping hand to get through the challenge. But if we're not feeling it, it's okay because we can tap into our own reserves of trying to rule over our feelings with our mental mind strength, our mind capacity. And how do we get this mental focus? And the answer is with the necessary preparations of meditation and prayer. So every day when we open up that book and we pray or we take a few minutes just to meditate and think about Hashem's greatness, that gives us a little bit of mind power and our mind is like a muscle. And when that muscle gets stronger and stronger, it doesn't have trouble doing the heavy lifting when necessary. This happens through mindful meditation on the greatness of God's blessed infinite light. So that our powers of bina, right, understanding, cognition, give rise to a spirit of das, recognition and reverence of God in our mind. So when we think about it, right, we're misbinin, we have bina applied, it helps us with the das coming into our lives because das means really recognizing and knowing that Hashem is real and like, as if he's standing right in front of me, as if he's actually in the room. And the more we think about it, the more real it becomes. And then we actually have a fighting chance at being in self-control in every situation. So what did we learn about in chapter three, going way back? Das doesn't add any new information, right? Recognition isn't like coming up with new knowledge, right? Because Bina is the cognition, it's understanding an idea. Rather, it fosters a mental attachment to the existing idea, making it real and relevant. So we've all sat in a lecture or in a class and heard somebody talking about some idea, whether it was science or math or um, any, anything that we're interested in, and we can hear all this data. But how does it actually become attached into our lives when we make like a mental attachment and we like something clicks or an example makes it really real or something? you know, that's when it becomes real and that's usually what we walk away with, right? We all come out of a lecture or something with something, like one thing that's, oh, that really stuck with me, like what that teacher or, or speaker said, and it's because that was, um, that turned into like a DAS experience, recognizing. Leah Sormeira, the reverence of God in DAS enables us to make the firm decision to turn away from evil. Dairaisa or Dairabanan, Afilu Isar 
Shell de Rehan, so it helps us with all situations and it generates the feelings of love. So it says, So when we meditate, not only do we get assistance with fearing God, with like stepping away from what's not the right thing to do, but also with loving God and with generating feelings of positivity and warmth and closeness and connection to attach to him through observing the biblical and rabbinic commandments, especially Torah, which is equal to them all. So what's our task in life, and I'll leave you guys with this today, is to wrestle with our ungodly urges and to seek to control them, to say, just because I feel like doing this thing right now, it doesn't mean I have to do it. I decide what I do. Hashem gives me the power to make choices. I'm not just a victim of reality. I'm not just going to do whatever happens, whatever comes my way. That's what I'm going to do today. No, I am in control. God gave me a really strong mind, a really beautiful heart, and I have the power to make all the choices about how I react to situations, how I'm going to speak to others, how I'm going to act, how I'm going to behave, and of course, how I'm going to think, because we all know that where our minds are is where we are. And when we think about something, that's where we are. So when we put our minds in a positive place and a grateful place and we say, okay, I'm really stressed out right now or I'm, I'm feeling a negative emotion. Okay, what are five things I'm grateful for? And that just immediately puts us into an amazing mind space. <laughs> and the best way to strengthen ourselves on this, in this task is to meditate on God's greatness until we develop real feelings for him. So I want to wish you all an amazing week. <laughs> and we'll get to section two when meditation isn't working. Today we are discussing why meditation does work, and next week we'll get to the plot twist. So um, thank you so much for tuning in to Espresso and Kabbalah. I want to wish you all a fantastic week, and thanks for tuning in to Kabbalah with a sip of espresso. Have a great one. Bye.